Hello and welcome to Ultimate Opinion. I'm Carson Durrett. It has come to my attention that if I talk in an angry monotone voice while looking like I hate everything, I can become Tommy Lauren. In case you don't know who that is, that is the host of a show called Final Thoughts, where she essentially just spews out ignorant, conservative remarks in a tone full of anger. She seems to rant about everything, and she specifically enjoys bashing our president. Well, since she gets a lot of notoriety for ranting, I figured I'd give it a shot. This week we have the murders of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, both of whom were shot and killed by police, so you know Tommy had some final thoughts. Alton Sterling did not get shot for selling CDs, and to put forth that narrative is dishonest. Just as hands up, don't shoot was dishonest. Hell, but don't create your own narrative. Here's what we know about Sterling. Sterling was a registered sex offender. He was previously arrested for aggravated battery, criminal damage to property, unauthorized entry, and domestic abuse battery. In 2009, he was sentenced to five years in prison for marijuana possession and for carrying a legal weapon with a controlled dangerous substance. Family members said he was on probation when he died and would have not been allowed to carry a gun. That's what we know. When an officer uses deadly force outside a convenience store after an altercation and the only evidence we have is a crappy cell phone video, suddenly we know the motive is white racism. No, that doesn't cut it. Don't create your own narrative? Really? You mean the same way that you and so many other conservatives created a narrative about radical Islam right after the Orlando shooting, right? And how does naming Alton's criminal history help your point? Just because he messed up in the past doesn't make his murder somehow less than. The police didn't know his criminal history when they approached him, and it doesn't justify their actions. Criminal history or no criminal history, a human being was murdered. Which brings us to Philando Castile, who she yet again mentioned his criminal history, or lack thereof, I should say, as if it matters. Castile, this case, from what we can tell, is strikingly different from Michael Brown, Freddie Gray, and Alton Sterling. He didn't appear to resist arrest. He didn't show signs of aggression or noncompliance. He wasn't pulled over on a man with a gun or other dangerous tip. His record is rather clean with just a few minor offenses. These are the kind of incidents that need to be at the forefront. These, the ones that are unexplainable and what, from what we can tell, unjustifiable. And we lead with the facts of the case, not the narratives people concoct to whitewash the incident and the victim. That does absolutely no good. When you hold up convicted felons with rap sheets a mile long that also happen to violently resist arrest, you lose credibility. You just don't seem to get it, Tony. Black people are three and a half times more likely to be killed by police than white people. The Black Lives Matter movement isn't saying all cops are bad. They are saying that the bad cops need to be held accountable. More importantly, it's time for the good cops to hold the bad accountable. Instead of saying, oh well, we don't know, and turning a blind eye, it's time the good cops condemn those that abuse their power and murder innocent people. Look, there are multiple problems in America, but right now, we need to focus on the problems in our police force. Continuing to ignore the problem and simply blaming the black man will get us nowhere. Trevor Noah mentioned in a brilliant segment on July 7th, that acknowledging the problem actually does lead to change, as it did in Las Vegas. In 2011, the Las Vegas Police Department acknowledged that there was a potential for bias in their police force. So they acknowledged the problem, they trained their police in a new way to assess and de-escalate situations, and their police shooting rate went down by 36%. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but at least it is something compared to the nothing that America has done since the shooting of Michael Brown. Change is long overdue, so get involved, take a stand, and most importantly, let your voice be heard. If you stay silent, you are part of the problem, so don't be part of the problem. Stand up and speak up, because the change that you so desperately seek will not come if you stay silent. I'm Carson Durrett, and this has been Ultimate Opinion.